Three, two, one. Morning, everybody. My name is Ben Brady, and I am the 3D Printing Texan. I got a message last night from somebody who wanted me to do this video. So today we're going to talk about bootloaders and flashing firmware. Now, I know there's a lot of videos out here on YouTube that talk about this, this particular subject. But I think we're going to take some time uh, to go through this and... Um, you know some of the things that we that we see in some of the other videos and, and I'll tell you what these guys that do the other videos they're great guys but sometimes they just don't go into enough detail for people who don't know or not a lot about electronics and programming and 3d printers and so uh, this is going to be geared specifically towards somebody who's new and completely ignorant of the uh, of the subject now I spent 40 years as a programmer, contract programmer, uh, and then I spent another four years as a judge. And in all that time, I learned that there is no shame in ignorance. As human beings, we are born with two things in common, every single one of us. One, we're all born naked. We don't have any choice in the matter. Two, we are all born ignorant. And that is why there is no shame in ignorance. Now, if we learn through the course of our lives about a particular subject and we deal with that subject contrary to the facts that we have learned, not opinion, facts, if we deal with that subject in a way that's contrary to those facts, that's not ignorance, that is stupidity. And so, don't do stupid things, if you, if you can help it. I mean, if you're ignorant, there's no shame in that. But if you learn something about something, like for example 3D printing, like for example if you're, if you're if you're inside your controller board and you're poking around in there, don't be poking around in there with a dental pick. Uh, you're going you're gonna to do some damage. Use a ceramic screwdriver or something like that. Okay? So, that being said, I'm here to help you overcome your ignorance. Now, so what we have here is I've got uh, an old controller board. I took this off of one of my Ender 2s. And um, this will be just fine for what we're, we're trying to do. If you have an Ender 3 or an Ender 5 or maybe an older CR10, this is all the same board. This particular board itself is an older version. There's a little jumper right here that you have to jump uh, to tell it to... Um, I, I'm sorry, the jumper's on this end right here. Um, that you have to tell it you're going to put it in programming mode from the USB port. But uh, that's the only difference between this board and the newer boards that, I, that I'm able to tell in terms of flashing firmware. Now, let's talk about bootloaders. The Ender 3, Ender 5, the old CR10, the original CR10. Everybody that uses this Creality Melzi board with the uh, 123A uh, microprocessor. This microprocessor only has 128K of RAM. And so, as a result, uh, there's not a lot of RAM, there's not a lot of space. And as Marlin, the firmware that is on these boards, has been developed, it's gotten more and more features, makes the printers more and more capable, but there's a cost. And that cost is due to bloated libraries that are used during development. Now, I'm sure that the guys at, 
at Marlin, Scott Latine, and some of the other guys. Scott just lives about 30 miles from me. Um, I'm sure they do everything they can to make sure that uh, that these libraries are efficient and that they're using the proper uh, coding techniques. But the underlying factor is that they're that they're using libraries that are written by other people who may or may not be as efficient as they are, and so as a result, uh, they they tend to take up a little bit more room, and so. Over the, over the years, over the course of years that Marlin has been developed, more and more features have been added, and it has become a little bloated, uh, but it's used on 90% of the printers uh, in the world. So uh, that has something to say for it. Now, Marlin has progressed from an 8-bit processing situation to 32-bit, because we're moving ahead to 32-bit boards. And so, and that makes things faster now. Uh, and, and it makes things more efficient in terms of the programming uh, and more efficient in terms of uh, the printer itself being able to handle uh, the tasks that you're throwing at it. For example, drawing circles, uh, producing circles. That's very computationally extreme. And as a matter of fact, uh, there's a problem with drawing circles using Octoprint over the USB port because the USB port slows things down in such a way that if you try to print circles fast, you start losing information and the circle resolution starts failing. And so uh, circles and Octoprint aren't really a great idea over like 40 or 50 mil, uh, 40 or 50 millimeters per second. Uh, faster than that, you start having problems. So, anyhow, bootloaders. Bootloader is a little snippet of code that sits in the microprocessor's uh, flash memory, and all it does is look at the USB port and says, "Is there a signal?" on the USB port that's telling me to erase the flash memory and wait for new programming to come across the, the USB port. That's all it does. It's about 500 bytes or so of, of program and, and all it does is monitor that situation. And it looks for a specific signal and it says okay now I'm in programming mode and then it wipes out everything and it's ready to flash. Now if you don't have a bootloader, how do you get the firmware onto the board? Well, that's actually pretty easy. When uh, the board is new, I'm going to switch to the microscope. When the board is new, we have a port here called the CSIP. The uh, it's circuit of integrated serial programming, and so on this particular board, this is located between the USB port and the display plug, where the connection for the display plugs in, and uh, just to, on every Arduino board, there this connection appears in some fashion or another. Now. In almost every board that I've seen except one, this connection is the same. It's six pins and they're in this configuration. And so um, the most important pins to note are this pin right here, which is five volts, and this pin, whoop, right, I'm trying to navigate the microscope here. This pin right here, which is ground. And then the other important pin is this pin right here, which is the reset pin. Now the other three pins are just signal pins, transmit, receive, and, and uh, uh, handshaking pin. And so, and I'll document those. I'll put a, an image uh, in the video so you can see what they are. So um, that's how the firmware gets loaded 
from the manufacturer if they choose to do that uh, at the factory. They just plug a header in, send some code to the board, boom, it's got a bootloader. Then they can flash firmware via USB or they can flash firmware via this port. Doesn't matter. So as a result, uh, you end up with firmware on the board. Now, in the case of the Ender series printers and the older CR10 and other, other printers like the ANET A8 um, and, and other lower end printers w that used a controller board with the 123A processor, they don't have the RAM to, to have all of the features in the firmware enabled that most people would want. So what happens is the factory, the, the, the printer, the companies that produce these 3D printers, they elect to turn off certain features in the firmware that they deem not so important. For example, Creality is notorious for not having thermal runaway turned on. And at the same time, as a as a marketing feature, they do have resume on power loss turned on, which takes up quite a bit of RAM and is questionable in terms of re in the reliability um, of, of it, that functionality. And it's notorious for killing SD cards. So, but it's a marketing issue. How do we sell more printers? Well, we tell people, hey, we've got this feature in firmware where we can resume on power loss, so so they don't ha they don't lose their print. It maybe works maybe twenty or thirty percent of the time. Uh, it, it's not that great. It has that feature has since been rolled into the the main fork of of Marlin. In Marlin one point one point nine has it, and I'm sure two point oh has it as well. Uh, I choose not to turn it on because, quite frankly, I don't care. Excuse me. And so, that's why we don't have bootloaders on some of these boards. Because there's just not enough memory to put it there. And put features on that, that the marketing people say, hey, yeah, we, we really want to have these. So, features like, you know resume on power failure and and thermal runaway protection so you know I'm sure that there's some bean counter somewhere in some factory that says you know the risk of a thermistor failing or a heater cartridge falling out is is so small just don't turn on th uh, thermal runaway protection but we've seen videos of people testing this feature <coughs> excuse me where the results of that can be catastrophic. Now, quite frankly, if I'm running a printer and I'm printing overnight and I'm sleeping upstairs, I don't want my printer catching fire. And so I elect to turn on thermal runaway protection. So by default, Marlin has it turned on because they're aware, they're, they understand that here in this country, we are a very litigious society and if our 3D printer catches fire and it comes out that that Marlin uh, didn't have thermal runaway turned on, uh, that could be bad for MarlinFW.org. So now, how do you flash a bootloader? There's several different ways, but it all comes through this port. I'm going to switch back to the main feed here. So, you can flash using several different methods. You, the easiest way to flash a bootloader is to use an Arduino Uno board with some jumpers. Now, to do this, you're going to need five 
female to female, these are called DuPont jumpers, okay? They have little DuPont connections on, on the ends of them. Let me move that over here so you can see. Uh, so, there's, so there's little DuPont connections that you just push onto the pins. And then you need one. Oh, did this get broken? Looks like. No, it didn't. Okay. The other one's on the other end. This is a female. And on the other end is a male. Let me see if I can get this to focus. You can see that pin there uh, sticking up. Let's see, let's see if I can get something in the background there. Well, oh, it's just not going to do it. So, okay, so you, you can see that pin there right by my finger, right there, sticking up. All right. So that goes into uh, one of the connections here on the board in uh, pin 10. So one, two, three, that's pin 10. All right, now I'll just plug that back in so I don't lose it. Now, it's real easy to connect these connectors to, uh, to the board. On the UNO board, I'm gonna put the UNO board under the microscope here and switch back to the microscope so you can see. On the UNO board, see here we have this connection that says ICSP. I'm going to raise the microscope up just a little bit. And focus. And so there's the ICSP and these are the six pins that we talked about. And uh, as you can see, I have my connections there. And on this particular board, uh, they get labeled uh, in the silk screening. So now, it's real easy to, to put those on. Every, every UNO board has those, has that connection. And it's UNO boards are, are in the same place all the time. Um, and um, now let's talk about the cost of an UNO. You might pay about 15 bucks. Might find it a little cheaper. I think I got mine off of Amazon. I think it was like 12 or 13 dollars. Um, and then and then you're gonna you're gonna have to buy some uh, jumpers. They usually come in a strip of 40 jumpers, 40 female to female jumpers, and then 40 male to male jumpers or 40 male to female jumpers. And usually you can buy all of those for, for like under $10 on Amazon. Uh, I'll see if I can find some links and put them in the description. Um, and so this is by far the easiest way to burn a bootloader. Now, there are other devices. For example, there is what is called the tiny ISP device. Now, I bought this one from, uh, I think, Ali AliExpress, and um, I've never gotten this one to work. Don't know why. Just It just doesn't work. I think it's probably just bad. Uh, but it's got, on almost all of the tiny ISP devices, it's got a little connector. It's got, uh, and all of those ICSP pins are in this connector. And so there's a little ribbon cable that comes in there, plugs in there, and on the other end, there's this is a 10 conductor uh, ribbon. On the other end, you have a little adapter that you get usually get with the uh, with the the uh, tiny SP, and you plug that onto there. It's it's keyed. It only goes one way, and so then you have a connector that goes from 10 pin to 6 pin. And that plugs onto the connector on your printer board. Now, in this particular case, this particular connector will not fit on an Ender board. So you have to be careful about what you buy. And I found a vendor that has the correct size connector here for 
that will fit directly on an Ender board. And I'll, I'll post that link in the description. Now, so, the, so the, that's the other way you can do it. The third way you can do it is you can use, instead of an, uh, a, uh, an Arduino Uno board, you can use an Arduino Nano board. Now, I have one of those running around here somewhere. Uh, the Nano is uh, not very big at all, uh, especially compared to a Uno. And uh, so here's, here's a Nano board. And it, this has all the same connections as an Uno board. It's just a very small form factor. So here's a, here's a micro USB connection. And then there's a, usually they have, a, uh, here's your IS, ICSP connection. And you wire this up just like an Uno board. Uh, there's, there's one pin here that you'd have to use. In this case, you could use all female to female jumpers because the nano board doesn't have a header where you'd plug something in. It's just got these header pins. This is meant for plugging onto a breadboard. So uh, this and this has all the signals that you need. And and you can buy these cheap. I mean, I think I bought this one for five bucks off of Amazon. So, uh, but you could use it to to flash your bootloader. Now. If you have one handy, why buy one, right? Uh, now, there's also another device that is used to flash the bootloader. And this device comes with, the, this is a USB uh, device. It's similar to a tiny ISP. The downside, this, this device comes from Creality with their BL Touch kit. And this is how they want you to flash their firmware onto their printers. Now, does it work? Yes. However, there is a bit of a problem with this device. First of all, it only works with one particular piece of software, and there is very little in terms of documentation for that software. The instructions from Creality are scant at best, and in one case, they're wrong. And so if you read the directions that they send you in the, in the PDF file, it works. If you follow the video that they that they point you to on YouTube, it does not work because the video information is wrong. So, now, I would not recommend that you use this device because it only works with one piece of software and it does not work with the Arduino programming environment. That's it. Just doesn't work. So. That being said, if you have one, there is a way that you can use it if you understand how to use it. And, and we can talk about that. But it's not a good idea to use this device. Just, it's, it's not easy. There's also another option for flashing a bootloader. And that is via the use of a Raspberry Pi board. And I'm not going to get into that issue here because it's very convoluted. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. There is, there is a good article. If you Google, uh, you can find it. There's a good article about doing it from uh, Fission something or other. I can't remember the link. I'll find the link and post it in the description. Um, but it, it's not an easy task. But if you have enough, you already have a Raspberry Pi. If you're running Octoprint, and you buy your printer, and you got to have a, you got to have a bootloader. You can certainly use the GPIO pins to do this. It's just not for the faint of heart. You also have to load some other software onto the Raspberry Pi. So just be aware that it can get a little complicated. Now, I mentioned earlier about this particular connector. 
this is the connector that uh, will fit on the ender board. And now the reason there's a problem with it fitting is if you're using a tiny ISP, let's see here, I gotta look at the light. All right, so this goes this way. All right, so the reason that it's, there's a problem fitting is right here. The display adapter connection gets in the way. This connector is plugged onto the ICSP. And so with the other connector, the black uh, plastic part of the connector here uh, won't fit. So, I mean, if now if you buy one of those and you end up with one, you could certainly cut it down with a Dremel tool. All is not lost. But I would recommend that you get one like this uh, just to have it. Okay? So that deals with uh, Tiny ISP and uh, the Creality bootloader solution or firmware burning solution for their VL Touch Kit. Now, let me put some of the stuff up because. If I don't, it'll get confused. And then we can move on to putting the bootloader onto our board. Now, too many, too many things out. Okay. So now we have the UNO board with our connections. Five female connections, or actually in this case, six female connections on the, on the uh, ender board. And so what we're going to do is we're going to connect these up, and we're going to go, in my case, I have brown, orange, red, or brown, red, orange, yellow, green, and then I have another brown connection. You may double up, I mean, but th there should be enough colors uh, if you want to have separate colors. And then the other thing that I would recommend is, I, I have these individual connectors. Get some DuPont connectors and, and put, three of these, put three of these together on one side and three on the other side, and that way it makes it real easy. If, if you're going to be doing more of these, like if you've got a bunch of ender printers, you can certainly uh, find yourself doing this back and forth, back and forth. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to hook up this, uh, I'm going to switch back to the microscope. Okay, so now we have our, uh, our Arduino IDE up, and, and it just so happens that the last time I loaded this sketch was the bootloader sketch. And so um, I just want to... Uh, I'm going to show you how to get to this sketch, and if you've just loaded the uh, the Arduino IDE, uh, and so uh, what the first thing you need to do is program the Uno to be the bootloader programmer, and so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to get this sketch. We're going to go to the file menu, and we're going to go to the examples. Uh, drop down, uh, drop uh, example sub menu, and then we're going to select number 11, which is Arduino ISP, and it's going to fly out another little choice here called uh, Arduino ISP, and that's the sketch. So now that loads the sketch into into the sketch book, and so uh, excuse me at this point. What we need to do is we need to uh, set up the UNO uh, in the Arduino IDE. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the UNO into the USB port. And uh, great. It says that that USB port is not recognized. So let's try a different port. Mm 
All right. Do it like that. Maybe. We're going to have to check. We're going to have to check device manager. Okay, so it knows it's unplugged. It knows it's plugged. Let's look at device manager real quick. Hold on just one second. Just want to make sure that it knows that it's really connected and that we don't have a driver problem and what have you. So let me just I'm going to scoot over here so you can see what's going on. So here's device manager and uh, let's see. There is our there's our board. And it comes back as a ramps and it says it's on COM 14. But apparently there is a problem. So let's see here. Update the driver. Let's see if we can find a driver. This might take a few minutes. It's kind of funny that we're having to do this because I just had this plugged into another port and we had the driver. So, uh, but, oh, well, what happened was I had a power failure and my battery backup battery is dead. I have to replace the battery. So it looks like we got a new a new driver. So let's go ahead and load that. And now it sees the uh, the driver for the board and it says it's COM14. All right. Now, let me close the device manager. And uh, now we're back here to the Arduino IDE. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select the tools. And uh, we're going to be Arduino Uno. All right, and then we're going to go back to tools again, and we're going to select the COM port. In this case, it's COM port 14. And then we're going to go back to tools again, and we're going to select programmer ABRISP Mark II. It's very important that we pick that particular one. So that's what's picked. And then we're going to go ahead and go to the sketch menu, or you can do a control R, but if I do a control R, it's going to stop my recording. So um, I'm just going to use the menu. And when I go verify and compile, and it's going to verify and compile the sketch, make sure that there's not any errors. Sometimes you can load a sketch into the uh, Arduino IDE. We're just waiting for this to finish. And um, uh, sometimes, you know, you might hit something and uh, it might uh, enter some characters in the sketch that might not be good. So. So now it's, we see that it's done compiling, and now we're going to go back up here to the sketch menu, and we're going to say upload, and that's going to upload this sketch to the uh, UNO uh, board. And then you know, you're going to see some lights flashing real briefly, and then it's done uploading. That's how quick it is. Now, to flash the bootloader, it's real easy. All you do is you come down here to the tools menu, and you instead of the Arduino UNO, if you're using an Ender board, you're going to pick the Sanguino board menu down here at the bottom. Now, if you don't have this board down here on the bottom, it's not a big deal. It's very easy to find. Okay, so I'm going to put the link in the description, and you need to take this link and you need to put it into the file preferences for the Arduino IDE. So let me show you where that goes. So we go here to File, and we go down here to Preferences. And that's going to open up a dialog. And right here, it says Additional Board Manager URLs. And so there's going to be this long link to a JSON file. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to copy this link right now while we're in here. Uh, and remember to put it in the into the, uh, the description in the video. So that's copied, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So you put that link in there, and then you go back here to the tools menu, and then uh, go back down here to the boards manager, and you should see that link there on the bottom. It's going to be on the bottom. So you select that board. Now, go back up here to the tools menu and you go to the processor choice and it should have already selected the AT Mega 1284 
processor, 16 megahertz. If, you may get a list of processors if this is the first time. So then just go ahead and select the 16 megahertz processor and make sure that your COM port is selected and correct so that so we know that we're on COM port for, COM 14. And then on the uh, programmer selection, make sure that your programmer is selected as Arduino as ISP. Okay, it's very important that you select that. Now at this point, we are ready to burn the bootloader. So we go here to tools and we say burn bootloader. And you're going to see down here, burning bootloader to the I.O. board. This may take a minute and then it's going to say done burning bootloader. Now if you get an error here, the first thing that you want to check is you want to make sure that all of your connections on your board are correct. One to one, two to two, three to three, four to four, five to five, and then the sixth connection, which is actually pin 5 on the ICSP, goes to pin 10 on the UNO. Okay, it's very important that you, that you set that reset pin. So, uh, I'll put a diagram here in the video right now. And that uh, will get us uh, what you want. So, right now, this board has a bootloader on it. At this point, you can shut down the, the IDE and you can disconnect the UNO board and I'm going to switch over switch to the main video feed here and uh, so at this point disconnect the UNO board disconnect the wires from your printer board don't take them off the UNO board you don't need to take them off there unless you're using it for something else uh, but I typically leave mine on because I all I ever use this UNO board for is for flashing and so at this point uh, you are done flashing the bootloader and you can plug in uh, the board to uh, the um, computer and put that in there and we'll just put this over here on the side and so uh, I'm going to unplug this cable because I don't need this cable anymore. Get it out of the way. One of the few really long USB, USB cables that's well shielded that works. So uh, keep that in my flash bag. All right. So now uh, the next step is how do we flash Marlin? And so uh, it doesn't. It's not a. It's not a big process. And as a matter of fact, uh, it, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's there's a couple of files that we have to edit. And um, as a matter of fact, I think what I'm going to show you is. Um, while I'm at it, let's see. I gotta find my cursor. And I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna open up uh, the Arduino IDE again. Actually, I think I'm gonna open it up a different way. I'm just gonna go here to. where I have my firmware. All right, now. So let me move this over here so we can see it. And um, I'm going to go there. So now, here we have, uh, this is my location where I have my firmware installed that I'm always messing with. And uh, let's see, I need a cable for the board to plug in. So we're going to plug this in, like so. 
and we're going to plug the board in. So this is this is the printer board. Okay, we're just going to plug the USB cable in, and like so. So now the board's lit up, and we heard it acknowledge that it's there. And uh, now, what we want is we want to open the Marlin firmware. So. In the Marlin firmware, and I'm looking, I'm using Marlin 2.0, so you, so your screen may look different. If you download, uh, matter of fact, let me show you. If you download Marlin 1.1.x uh, bug fix or Marlin 1.19, I use the bug fix. So uh, let's see. Uh, you're going to get the Marlin folder, and it's going to have all kinds of files in it here. Okay, now when the developers of Marlin decided to go to 2.0, they refactored all of the source code to work with another programming development environment. Instead of the Arduino IDE, they use a development environment called Platform IO and a Visual Basic Code Studio uh, setup. I haven't set it up yet, so but I will set it up, and when I do, I'll probably show a video on how to set it up. So, um, what we want to do is we want to. So this is Marlin 1.1.x bug fix, and this is how the files look in the folder. But we're not going to do Marlin 1.1. We're going to do Marlin 2.2. So we're going to go back here to 2.2, where my 2.2 is, and you're going to see here that the file structures are much different. And if we go into Marlin, this is all that's in that folder. All of the source code files that you saw in that other folder are in here in various folders. They've broken it all up to make it easier to manage the project. Okay, So all of the source is still there. It's just that it's, it's a little more convoluted in terms of getting to it outside of the development environment. All right. So at this point, let's see, I don't know which one I have here. What I bet I have my Ender 5 profile in here because I just did some work on my Ender 5 yesterday. I took a I took the Ender 5 board out. And I put in my spare board for my CR10S because the CR10S has faster microcontroller with more memory. And and there was a discussion on Facebook, hey, I want to upgrade my Ender 3, or actually the discussion was, is a CR10S better than an Ender 3? That was the discussion. And, and my opinion is, yes, even though the Ender 3 is newer, and it actually is a darn good printer I have when it's sitting right back there in the back. You see it right there by, over my shoulder here. Uh, it, it prints great. It's an awesome printer. It really is. I love it. I have a CR10 right here. It's great. Uh, CR10S. It's great. I love it. It's an awesome printer. There are differences between those two printers. Physical differences that affect the quality of the prints. For example, on the CR10S, it's a 300 by 300 bed. You put a piece of glass on it. It comes with a piece of glass on it. You put a piece of glass on it. That glass has weight. And so the bed travels back and forth, back and forth. And the printer has to deal with inertia and acceleration. And so either slow, starting up the glass, slowing down the glass, especially if you're going changing direction. Okay. So for example, let's say you're printing a a calibration cube. You go so far and then you have to turn a corner. So you go so far you have to slow down, stop, and then change direction to make a square. Okay? So the printer has to deal with those forces. And depending on how long that run is, the printer can get up to pretty good speed, but then it has to figure out, okay, when do I have to start slowing down? And so you have to deal with the weight of the glass and the weight of the bed and the weight of the print. 
So there's a lot of things that factor into this. So the Ender is 235 by 235. Typically doesn't have a glass bed on it. Typically it's just got a little plastic filled surface on it. Much lighter bed. Hence better prints. Now, the Ender 5 is a different kind of kinematics. It's still a Cartesian printer. It is not a Core XY printer, but there are some people that are calling it a Core XY printer, but it's not. It is an XY Cartesian printer. Now, the difference between the CR-10S and the Ender 3 and the Ender 5 is the Ender 5 does not have a bed that moves back and forth. It moves up and down in the z-axis, which is fine because the only inertia and acceleration and jerk issues that that printer has to deal with are the head, the hot end, moving back and forth x and y. That's it. So the hot end is a lot lighter. And because of that, the Ender 5 is an awesome printer right out of the box. Now, where is it? Right here. So, so we had this discussion yesterday on Facebook. And we're going to get to burning the firmware in just a second. And, and the discussion was, which is the better printer? Ender 3 or CR-10S? No. The Ender 3 prints better, but the CR-10S is a much more capable printer because the control board in that printer has twice the memory and a faster processor. And so it's easy or easier to get a good quality print out of the CR-10S, all things being equal. So for example, my test was, let me take my spare CR-10S board, update the firmware, put it in my Ender 5, and see how much better the Ender 5 prints. And I'm telling you, it does make a difference to do that. The Ender 5 is an awesome printer right out of the box, but it uses the same controller board as the Ender 3. So, changing this board, it's screw compatible. You just have to make a few firmware changes. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and then, it really does an awesome job. So, for example, I printed this Benchy. This is the first print with my CR-10S board. Now, right here, you're going to see, uh, right there, you're going to see the line. That's the seam for the Z. I should I, I just didn't set it in Kira. I had a Kira crash yesterday, and I didn't reset some settings. And so instead of hiding that Z seam on the sharpest corner where it couldn't be seen, Kira puts it right there. So, but other than that, this Benchy is perfect. I mean, this is the best Benchy that I have ever printed. Even the writing on the bottom came out nice. Now it's a little white on the bottom because I took it off the bed too hot. But... Uh, other than that, the, the writing itself, I don't know if I can get it to focus. Uh, let's see here. But you can see the writing. Now, this is printed with uh, this is printed with 3D Solutec real gold filament. Nice looking filament. Uh, but this is an excellent Benchy. Uh, I, I, it, it really did a great job on this. And so... As a matter of fact, what I did was after I changed the board, I was doing some test prints. I needed something to compare something that I had printed before I changed the board and something that I had printed after I changed the board. And I thought I still had a couple of benches that I had printed before I changed the board, but I had given them away to kids at church. And so um, I printed some other parts that I have done with my printer. So, for example, uh, on my Ender 5, I've got a, a bracket for my calipers, and a uh, here's another bracket for my calipers. I made a couple of changes, but let's see. Neither one of these are, are the, the final product. But 
I printed a couple of these, and I printed uh, I printed a hook for my ruler, and I printed my uh, my angled spool holder. I printed it all in gold. I wanted it all to match. I printed my little uh, USB cable holder so the cable doesn't come out of the front of the printer. So I printed a bunch of new stuff to look at to see how it did. And I'm telling you what, it printed awesome. So uh, I was very pleased with the board change. Now, I'm going to change that board again. I've got an MKS Gen L board and a TFT 20, uh, 28 uh, touchscreen I'm going to put those in that, in that printer. I'm going to put them in the print in the Ender 3 as well, because both of those printers deserve an upgrade. They're good printers. Okay, now let's talk about flashing Marlin. So, currently, this board in front of us has a bootloader and it's blank. That's it. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Marlin, and to do that, the easiest way is to go into the folder where you have Marlin. And double click on the Marlin, the Marlin INO file, and that is going to open up the Arduino IDE with the Marlin sketch open. And what you're going to see, excuse me, what you're going to see at the top of the screen is you're going to see uh, some tabs. So there's a configuration tab, configuration advanced tab the boot screen H tab and the status screen H tab. Now the boot screen and the status screen you're not going to you're not going to do anything with. You may do something with the configuration advanced tab maybe depending on what you're trying to do. For example, if you're going to enable a BL touch, then you will need to go into this tab. Uh, the configuration tab you're definitely going to deal with. So uh, what I'm going to show you is first how to burn this software to the board. That's the easy part. So, and then I'm going to show you the differences in the firmware between the Ender 3 and the Ender 5. So you can see where some of the changes are. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the changes. Because I don't have. I don't think I have just a stock Marlin con uh, configuration file anymore because I've, I've been modifying configuration files for weeks. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, and you should be able to read this text, okay? I, I zoomed in the font so to make it readable on YouTube. So uh, this is uh, Marlin. And I'm going I'm to scoot this little border down here just a little bit. Well, I guess I can't. Can't make that any bigger, any littler. Can I close it? No. All right. So this is what we got. All right. Now, to burn the bootloader, to burn the uh, firmware, rather. We've already got the bootlo bootloader on the board. We're going to go to the tools menu. We've got our Sanguino board selected. We've got the AT Mega chipset selected. We've got the correct port. Actually, we don't. Have we have COM13 is the one we want because it changed it when we plugged in our board. And so now we just got to make sure that that's selected. It's going to check mark. We can test this connection if we go to the serial monitor. And uh, it's going to open up a different window. Let me scoot it over here. And all you're going to see here is uh, a window. And down at the bottom, there is a thing that controls how you do the new line, your baud rate, and clear the output if you have a bunch of junk on the screen. So we want to make sure that the baud rate is 115 200. That's the only baud, ri baud rate this uh, board operates on, it seems. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Some, some boards will go up much higher. But 115, 200 is the baud rate. And if we try to communicate with this board right now, 
like for example, if we want we want to query the uh, the the version of firmware, it shouldn't have any firmware, but we can do an M115, and it should come back with no signal, nothing. Okay, so that shows us that there's a bootloader because it didn't give us an error, and uh, it it doesn't give us any information. It's blank. And if there was a display hooked up to this right now, it would be blank. Not to worry. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to minimize that window for now. Because we'll look at it after, uh, after a while. And then I'm going to just go here to the tools menu and make sure verify everything here. And change the programmer uh, back to the... AVR Mark II, I don't necessarily need it, but I like to keep it to that so that selection. And we're going to go to the sketch menu. And we're going to go verify and compile. So once again, that's a control R if you're just, if you don't have that hotkey already selected. Uh, in my case, because I'm running my recording software and it uses control R to start and stop the recording, I don't want to hit control R. So I'm going to do verify compile. And it's going to Compile. You'll see it. You'll see some activity down here in the lower right-hand corner, with the status bar going, and um, it's going to take a moment. It says over here on the left side, compiling sketch. So you're going to get that, and uh, in a moment, it's going to say uh, done compiling, and that'll be great. If there's no errors, you'll be fine, and we can proceed with the next step. If there's errors, there's usually only one other error that pops up. And that is, you may not have the correct library installed for the display library. And I'm going to show you how to install that in just a second when we're done compiling. So uh, we just want to make sure that if you hit verify compile and you get this error about your UGLib error, you want to make sure that you load that library. So, uh, and that has to do with the graphical display that is used for, by the printer. All right, so we're just still waiting here for the sketch to compile. It's a little slow. My machine is, this is an old machine. I would love to upgrade the computer. If I had the money to do it, I would. Uh, but this machine, oh, we got an error. And so let's see what we, let's see what the error is. Uh, set the output for the beeper pin. Oh, okay. Let's see what we got. Do we have, uh, let me see what the first error is, because the first error usually gives us the sequence that we need in the file included from, and let's see what we got here. Ramps Creality. Ah, that's what's the matter. This board is not a Ramps Creality board. So the first step is we need to change this board to a Creality Melzy board. So let's jump down here to the motherboard. Let's do Control F, search for motherboard. Oops. Let's just search for board. And probably too far. Let's see. Try that again. Control F, search for board. So there's the first one. There's the next one. And Let's search for Creality, because we know that that's there. Oh, we're in the wrong file. That's what's the matter. In the wrong tab. So we need to go to the Configuration tab, Configuration.h tab. I'm sorry. And we're going to search for Creality. So there it is. <clears throat> Define Motherboard, 
Board ramps creality. Now, where do you find the name of the board to, to actually set? Well, you find that in, if you go back here to your file section, you go to uh, pins, and there's going to be a pin file for your board. And so you can run down here and I believe it's Melzy Creality. Yeah, so pins Melzy Creality. Now, if you open this up, I'm going to open this up in another editor just so I don't have to screw around with the uh, Arduino IDE. <coughs> and we'll move this window over. So the board name, defined board name is Melzy Creality. Okay? And so, if we go down here to scoot back up here to uh, where the heck did it go? Melzy underscore Creality. Okay, so that's the, that's, the, that's the name we want. So in this case, we're going to change this to say Melzy Board Melzy Creality. All right. So Board Melzy Creality. And then let's go ahead and compile a sketch. <coughs> now, we're going to get, probably going to get a bigger error now because I have some things enabled in this sketch that won't fit in this board. So there may be some things that we have to turn off to get a successful compile. We shall see. This is all good stuff for you to see how to do. Okay. Sometimes when you're messing with the firmware, you run into a problem. And you got to figure out, okay, I have a printer board that's blank. How in the hell do I get firmware onto it if I get these errors? As somebody who might be new to 3D printing and maybe you've never burned firmware to the board before, you might not have any idea what to do about these errors. And, and then the next thing you know, you're on Facebook and some of these other places, Reddit, and you're asking all kinds of questions from people. Hey, how do I burn this firmware? Can I get some help? And it might be midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning and you've been working on it for a couple of hours and you're frustrated and you're tense. And so, this is a good thing for you to see how to get through some of these issues, okay? So, if, you're, if you come to my channel and you're looking for a quick video on how to do stuff, you're not going to find one because I dig down deep into the details. And because sometimes the devil is in the details. And so, you know... God bless some of these other guys that do YouTube videos. I love them. I, I watch them all. I really do. But sometimes they just don't give you enough information to do what you need to do. And so I'm willing to sit here. I'm retired. What? I mean, I got plenty of time. I'm messing with my 3D printers. It's easy for me to give you this video and, and impart my knowledge and my experience to make sure that you can be successful. So that's why I'm doing it. I, I don't ask for Patreon support. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind it, but, but yeah, I, I mean, it would help. It would help me buy filament and things like that. But, but I, don't, I don't have a Patreon set up. I, if, if somebody wants to uh, reach out to me and say, hey, Ben, I want to make a contribution to you, great, awesome. Send me a comment, and, and I'll get back to you in the email. Or send me a Facebook message. 
that's fine. All right, so now we have, we have another error. So let's see what we got. So it says we have an error compiling for the board Sanguino. So let's run back up here to the list of error at the very, at the very beginning. Always go to the very beginning, the first error. So here we have two lines because, you know, compilers are stupid. And it says uh, text will not fit into the region text. Okay. This is one of those nebulous compiler errors that it just tells us, you know what? The sketch is just too damn big. And so I've got to see what's in here. What did I turn on? And I'll tell you exactly what it is. I know what it is. If you run down here to, I'm going to do a comp uh, find for uh, LCD. Let's, let's, matter of fact, let's go back even further. Yeah, let's do LCD. LCD. So, so you, I know, because I turned it on, I know what this error is about. Now, if you are just loading in Marlin, and you're trying to deal with this particular board, you could very well end up with this same error, too big to fit. If there's one setting that's not selected, that's not commented out, uh, that's not uncommented rather, you will get this message. And this is related to the display that's in the machine. Okay? It's the menus. There are too many items, too many menu items in the sketch, and so we have to deal with those. So we're going to say LCD, find, and we're going to go down here to, we're just going to keep going, find, 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 until we get to the LCD and SD support section. Okay? So we're going to kill this find window because we're just going to scroll down here for a bit. So the first things we want to do is there is, an, there is here at line 1582, and I don't usually mention line numbers because line numbers change. Okay? But what you want to see is play character set HD 4470, and there are three choices that you can select. Japanese, Western, and Cyrillic. So if this says Japanese, which it may well say Japanese, just change it to Western, okay? And then scroll further down, and then right here we have two choices. And this choice right here is the thing that's causing the problem. Define slim LCD menus, okay? So right now, this is commented out because the board that's in my Ender 5 now that this sketch comes from has enough memory to have all the menus. So what we have to do is we have to shorten the menus. So we go up here, we take out those two slashes at the beginning of the line, and then we do a sketch, verify, compile. Now, we're going to get another error. I know we will because I've got some other stuff turned on in this configuration file that we have to turn off. So this is a good process for you to understand what might be, uh, what might be causing an error that you might have on the screen. Now, let me, uh, let me silence my phone here because some... Every now and then I get a spam phone call, and uh, I forgot to silence my phone from YouTube. I told my wife that the phone was on silent, but because otherwise she calls me at any odd time and interrupts the video. So, uh, and that's fine. She's working. God bless her. Um, so, right now we're compiling the sketch. Again. That's okay. That's fine. And this is YouTube. You know, some people speed through it. But I would rather sit here and talk and give you information. If you, if you want to listen, that's fine. If you don't want to listen, there's a little scroll bar at the bottom of the screen that will allow you to go ahead. Uh, but I would rather give you some 
meaningful information. So getting back to our troubleshooting issue, you're going to run into these issues with the firmware. And if you're new, you don't know. Now, here we go. We have, so just that one issue uh, fixed the problem. Turn on the slim LCD menus. Now we have this message. Sketch uses 98% of program space. So that means it's going to fit on this board. So at that point, once we get this me message here, we can go to Sketch, Upload. Now this is going to recompile the sketch. It's probably not going to take as long. It's going to do a check on it because it doesn't have to verify it. It's just going to recompile it. And then uh, it gives us another message saying, okay, we've compiled it successfully. And then there's a message right down here that says uploading. See right here by where the hourglass cursor is. And it's going to take a moment and uh, it's going to, uh, you may see some lights flash on the board and it's going to upload that board to the, uh, upload the firmware rather to the board through the USB port. And so once this is done and the sketch is uploaded and the firmware is on the board, if you have a display attached to the board, you're going to see that uh, your printer has restarted. Now it says done uploading. I just saw, saw the board flash. It's resetting the board. And now it's ready to go. Doo 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 doo. USB. All right, so I'm not going to worry about the display, but you see the, the issues that you can run into. When I find out how to make this display work with an Ender 3 board, I will let you know. But in the meantime, you've seen how to flash firmware. We've actually flashed it now several times. Um, it's, not, it's not difficult. If you, if you have any problems, if you need any questions answered, please feel free to, to get down in the comments and, uh, and send me a message. Uh, I'm, I'm more than glad to answer any questions. Hit me up on Facebook, Ben E. Brady. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope I was entertaining. Uh, and I hope that you're able to get enough details out of these videos to get through any of the problems that you might have. So with that, I'm going to shut it down. Please subscribe, hit the bell. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the dislike button. I want to know. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please uh, feel free to send me a message down in the comments. My name is Ben Brady. I am the 3D printing Texan. Have a great day.